Hello YouTube and uh, welcome back to my garage. Today I want to talk a little bit about the history of the Athol Vice Company, which is my personal favorite brand of vices. Uh, they were founded in 1868 as the Athol Machine Company um, and most to produce a metal cutting device and uh, most of their patents come from Leroy Starrett. Now, anyone who works with tools will know the name Starrett for Starrett Precision Tools. Now, Leroy and uh, AMC had a bit of a falling out, lawsuits and whatever, um, and he was forced out at a certain point. Then he had lawsuits, and in uh, 1905, he was able to purchase uh, Athol Manufacturing Company as a subsidiary of Starrett, of uh, Starrett Tools, LS Starrett Tools. Um, they were producing the Athol uh, branded vices uh, since, no, well, basically 18, uh, since the 1870s. Um, and they produced Athol brand up until, I wanna say, as far as I know, somewhere in the 1940s to 50s range, might even have been a little past the 60s. Um, at which point they did actually change their branding to uh, LS Starrett, though they kept the designs uh, until the very last generation, which we have here, of the Starrett Vices. These were all produced in Athol, Massachusetts. So let's take a look at a little bit of the collection that we have here, because uh, this is the really cool stuff. So right here, first up, First up, you know, just give a little overview of uh, you know, holding the phone is interesting to this. So here we have the Starrett 923 and a half that I made a my very first video on. Then we have a 923. Notice the difference in sizes and heights. Though the meatball is the same, but the physicality of the vise does change. Then here we have an Athol 615. This is a five inch wide jaw. I did restore this guy, cleaned him all up, painted, made everything smooth, gave it a nice little highlight on the meatball. I like highlighting some colors. Here we actually have the smallest stationary. They also made a uh, rotating base, which I have um, a swivel base, which I do have one of too. This is the 612 and a half. This was the smallest one they made. I have not yet restored this guy. You can see how smooth it is. Super easy to move. I'm very happy to have this in my collection. And I'll be adding it my everyday user that is attached to my uh, movable rope. Workbench here is a 614 that I've restored. I do like the copper hammer look. Uh, Rust-Oleum products are fun. You know, and I wanted to kind of give a little history of Starr Tools and Athol Tools. Now, one of the biggest things you'll notice is this huge slide support. So that's what this is called on a vise. Here we have a reed 204 and a half I'm working on. You'll notice it's much smaller. This massive support is one of the things that Athol is known for. And you'll see here on the later Starrett models, they kept that very huge tongue. Uh, to support the slide. That's this body here is the slide. The jaw that moves on a vise, this is called the dynamic jaw because it moves. This is called the stationary jaw and the rest is called the body uh, when we're talking about a vise. So these are terms that will keep coming up as I make videos uh, and show you a little bit about it. So Athol produced a number of vices. Now, they also produced a an interesting ratcheting handle vise uh, that was really fascinating. I do have a couple of them, uh, including this guy right here. That's a 7 series. I believe it's a 712 with the 5 inch jaws. But as you see, it's inherently in pieces and I'm working on it. I actually am missing a spring and a screw to connect it. This ratchet handle here connected and it connects into these teeth here and you would open it to where you need to and pull and rotate it in the direction you need, which is really neat. Um, I do think I have the comments section working on these guys, so there should be able to post comments. I would appreciate it. I know my camera's uh, angles are terrible, 
Um, and you know, if I continue to do this, I'll probably have to get myself a selfie stick or a mount or something uh, to use to do this with. But I do enjoy showing off my collection. This three inch and three and a half inch jaw, now this does not have the original jaws, obviously. This does, which are in great shape. And you'll notice that the lines change. This gets bulkier here in this final design. This rotating swivel and uh, base gets triangular for great support versus this more old school style um, of classic vise with many vices looking very similar to this. This has removable jaws uh, and the older styles have jaws that were actually forged in. The body is cast iron and then the jaws were forged on. So this type of chipping that we see here, this is not terribly uncommon. You can actually see here, this is the cast and the chipping happened on the hardened vice or sometime in this guy's life. Uh, so this is fun. And then on my 614 here, you see this bent in. Someone used this as an anvil. And this shelf, these were not really meant to be anvils, even though this has a hardened anvil plate. These were not meant to be hammered on. So, um, you know, that was not part of it. And this is often what caused damage to these vices, especially when we talk about, when we eventually go talk about Prentice, uh, that area tends to split a lot on Prentices. It's actually known as the Prentice crack. It's so endemic to anything Prentice made. Um, but uh, yeah, a little short history on Athol vices. Um, they are the ones I am the most passionate about. Uh, so I just think the lines on them are beautiful. I think the designs are really nice. Uh, and this is my main collection. So I restore these for fun because it's really enjoyable. Uh, funny story on that, I'll tell that another time. And one of the very first ones I ever picked up was this Athol 633 here with the swivel jaw on it. You know, which allows for tapered. Athol was one of the very few companies that actually had that threaded in there for use. Most of them, it was just a drop-in friction pin. Um, and this was the very first one along with the standard three and a half that I have on my bench in the back there. Uh, that I ever worked on. So, so yeah, I'll tell a little more of that story next, uh, eventually. And uh, I'm going to do a, a couple more videos of these. I'm going to do some history of the Charles Parker Company, history of the Reed Company, maybe some history of the Wilton or Columbia. Uh, what do you guys think? Have a great day.